recording. Okay, we're here with Jean Baptiste. We're talking about an infographic for our forthcoming product launch on the Eco Home. So we go to the see the Eco Home features on the wiki and highlight the critical aspects of this thing. So first, 3000 watts. So the house Okay, so to begin with, I mean, the, the idea is that it has so many features that it's hard to actually wrap one's head around how much it has in an easy infographic. So we're trying to do a nice infographic that people can actually see, wow, this has got all of it in one package, because it's, it's pretty much more extensive than uh, pretty much anything we've seen out there, making a lot of alternative systems feasible and replicable. So let's go through that list, and the trick is... We need to communicate that quickly, effectively, so that people can appreciate that as opposed to get lost in the details because there's just so much in there. So let's let's go through that. So first of all, 3,000 watts of PV panels. And just to, just to preface this, this module, if built on a 16 by 16 uh, framework, the materials cost for that is actually $12,000. And the model that we're discussing here, the... Uh, if we go to, I'm going to show the OBI um, actually, let me look up at my email um, at the material that Katarina sent us for the model of how it actually looks uh, so let's take a look at that real quick so we can compare it but the model that that Katarina sent uh, is Yeah, it's 16 by 20. Uh, there's a Google Doc, okay. Let's see those, make sure we have both of those showing, just a little preview, so. Okay, it's loading up. Okay, so these are, these are different style guidelines. Um, No, that's not the one. So the one that I'm really basing on, um, the, the latest sketch on is called Infographic uh, Two Dots Utilities. Okay, let's see. Okay, it looks like I'm coming to it. It's the one that's got only three pages, right? Right, no? right. infographic utilities this thing should have only three pages and that's right okay so this is a quick conceptual view of what's in there but in it that's really selling half the house it's a very simple one 16 by 20 while the materials for 16 by 16 is twelve thousand dollars this is going to be a little more it's going to be like 14 15 or so thousand for this what's in here but so let's take a look at what all is in here. But the idea was to that the core content, the amazing ecological features that we're going through right now, all fit in that, that small area. So it's just jam-packed with different uh, things. So, so let's go through that. Okay, first of all, 3000 watts of PV panels. That means that essentially the whole 16 by 16, they take about 16 by 16 feet. They are uh, pretty much across the entire roof. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to do building integrated so that instead of having a roofing surface, we can integrate it with a framing for the roof so that we don't have to make a roof twice because the panels essentially make a roof. Okay, with that goes a grid tie inverter, which... Uh, so show it as some box that I don't believe that was let me see if that was shown well, in the yep in the model yet. right so in the model the things that anyone, yeah yeah it can so let me just read out loud biogas digester soak pit rainwater tank CEB wall rainwater collection solar panels Thermal electric generator, biogas cooking stove, CEB wall, another wall, modular hydronic stove, CB hydronic heated floor. Okay, that's, I mean, I kind of like to get into all the more detail than this because that 
does not really tell the whole narrative of what's uh, what's involved. So let's continue. The yes, the the inverter can go anywhere. Um, thermoelectric generator. So that is going to be a, a box, and you can Google that up. I mean, for anything you don't, you can't. So you just uh, you can Google these things. I also have the link feasibility of TEG power there. Um, but a thermoelectric generator is going to go in the back of the stove and it's going to extract heat from the stove and make electricity whenever the stove is running. So that's especially good for winter when you have heat. Okay, super efficient LED lighting. There are three watt bulbs that can basically replace like a 40, I think a 40 watt bulb. So three watt bulbs and a super efficient refrigerator, which uses on average eight watts of power. So you can think about it. With 11 watts, you can literally run your house at night. You need a light, you need some... The refrigerator runs all the time, pretty much. But other than that, if you're not using anything, then you can pretty much, on 11 watts, you can run your entire house. Now, if you're using a computer, you know, say you have a, an efficient computer that you got the battery charged for the whole night, well, you can get away with 11 watts. Now, that's pretty outstanding because the average fridge is 100 watts and the average house is 1 kilowatt. So, 11 is 100 times less than a kilowatt really so that's awesome okay pellet burner now that pellet burner by the way the thermoelectric generator has a hundred watts so that in itself could run your base load at night uh, so even that, though it's uh, only a hundred watts the thing about it is that's nice it can run 24 7 unlike solar power which has really six hours of runtime which means that the hundred watt is effectively a 400 watt like if you had panels okay Next, pellet burner integrated with heat exchanger for a hydronic heating system. So you've got metal tubing inside the stove that generates in-floor hydronic heat, like in the um, hydronic heat that we've done many times already. Uh, not many, but two or three, three times already. Uh, one for microhouse four, one for microhouse three, and one for the ponds in the greenhouse. And because the system works extremely well, that's going to be our standard feature. It's really comfortable and it's it's pretty easy to actually put in when you have the open source plans. Now, the unique thing about our system is that we're going to generate hot household hot water along with the hot uh, water for the, the heating. Now, commercially, that does not really exist. Those, those kinds of systems where you get both hot water and hydronic heating, those would have to be typically separate systems. And we're going to hack this while trying to keep that to code while produ so produce the hot water from the stove as well. Now the Amish do that and the Mennonites, they have uh, combined hot water and heating stoves, but not the white man. <laughs> okay, uh, so next is compressed earth block um, floor. So we're gonna use our bricks, which like we've done in Microhouse One, and we're gonna stone seal that so it looks like a nice professional finish. There's gonna be two CEB walls, which are good on thermal mass and extreme weight, so they can keep it cooler in the in a winter sorry in the summer and in the winter they they provide thermal mass to keep the heat around so passive solar design means the two large windows on the front as so expand the size in the current infographic those those windows are a little small um i'm actually posting this on i just posted this on an open source ecology works workbooks uh, workshops uh, page i sent you a link right there because it's cool and get people excited uh, so as you see you got the windows let's expand them to the max size possible between that brick wall and um, and the bathroom to to really look like a solar house and add a set of windows under the roof right above them in a loft so across the whole loft we should be catching heat there so so that's that and that overhang will shade it in the summer while allowing in the winter to have the heat go in there okay next item biofiber insulation so we're gonna hammer mill either newspaper or biomass and add some additives either lime or borax uh, to stabilize it to make our own uh, biofiber insulation so if we have some of the wall panels they we can say they're gonna be naturally insulated I mean it's basically the cellulose insula insulation you get at the store except we're gonna be making it so that's gonna be part of our materials production facility as well uh, I don't know if you heard, but the material pr production facility is going to be part of the the product launch here. So, okay, rooftop rainwater collection from a 16 by 16 roof, you get about 150 gallons of water per inch of rainfall. 
So we're gonna have a cistern underground that collects that, of course, with first flush water rejection so that you get clean water only and have filters so you don't get leaves and dead animals in there. And then, um, we, because we have a super efficient shower head by Brickor, they have these really nice, super efficient, but also very expensive, like 70 bucks, three quarter gallon per minute water heads that feel like it's like a, really it feels like a full shower. It's actually quite amazing. So a super efficient shower head, not like one of those rinky ones that they're almost like a mist. It's, it's a, it's a high quality one that actually feels like you're getting much more water. Okay, along with the water issues, the thing we're going to put in there is modular plumbing panels. So both the sink, the shower, and the toilet are on a little pedestal. And the little pedestal, so like an 8-inch platform. And if you look at the detail of the Sweet Home 3D drawing, it's actually in there. So take off the walls and you can see how that looks if you have a question. All right, um, so what the, what the deal is, is those can be made absolutely in a workshop, in parallel, so that we know that plumbing and all that, that takes time to fit in all those systems. That's where you spend months after you build the house to finish everything, right? Well, here we're gonna have it where you build the panels, so the, basically the inlet, water connection and the outlet which is the two inch drainage or whatever is going to be in that base so that you basically build that and move that module in there done so it's done in a workshop move it in and therefore any single person can do this you know you got to do is be able to plumb up you know make connections in pvc pipe using glue and stuff like that so that makes it absolutely accessible for anyone to build their own bathroom and, and utilities so both the shower toilet and uh and and sink now, as far as the toilet itself, so we're incorporating biogas here. So the toilet will have an insincorator, one of those munchers underneath and a pump, and that will send all that influent minus the P. So it's going to be a separating toilet. And um, the P goes into the soak pit and the, and the solids go into the digester. And the digester we're designing such that it can produce enough gas for about two hours of full cooking, like all the cooking you need for the day. So that's the goal. Now I noticed in the in infographic that Katarina sent, I mean, she has something like a three by three floor space structure. It's gonna be three by six or larger. It's gonna probably have, currently the way we're looking at it, it probably will have a thousand gallons. So that means three totes of 250 stacked vertically and then another one for the gas collection. So basically about a, a thousand liters or 250 gallons of gas volume and three times that for the digester area. But we're working on that design. We're collecting the subject matter experts to make it all happen. Because one of the themes here is we're, I mean, we're thinking about what our elevator pitch here is like, but, but it's a, really about now you can make it all happen. So we're pulling in all these subject matter experts unprecedented and it's hard to explain to someone because everyone says that everyone says oh yeah we're building upon all the knowledge but that's really hard and I think we're we're doing something um, that's really pushing the limit of that because being open source that means we can get the top experts in any field because typically the really good guys some of them might be closed but if you go to the the ones at the very top they're typically open <laughs> that's what we're finding out at least so so we get a lot of uh, subject matter expertise to make it all happen. Now, potable water. We're going to have a sand filter, charcoal filter, and ozonator. So those three systems will allow us to take the rainwater and convert it into potable water. And as far as potable water, that's for the sink and, a, and a, uh, basically the kitchen. Uh, you want super clean water. And we're going to be able to, to do that. Those technologies, we're going to have to in basically incorporate an open source, those elements into an open source version that's easy to use, low cost, and can essentially make for an autonomous house. So now we've got autonomous waste, autonomous electricity, autonomous cooking, autonomous water. So that's pretty amazing. Right, all loop. Yeah, yeah. Um, closed loop almost on the water because we're collecting if you call the atmosphere the closed loop yeah it's part of our cycle because we're collecting from the yeah um which means that if you have you know less than 20 inches 
you probably, you know, like 10 inches, it's going to be really hard. I mean, you can still do it, but you have to have, you know, more water collection, something like that. Here we have about 30, 40 inches, which is not going to be a problem to do that. Okay, so I also mentioned the gravel soak pit for the, the gray water um, and urine, actually. Now, those are code legal. They're, we have to design it, so we're, we're thinking about codes in mind and all of that. So... Uh, but the, the thing about this is, okay, we've got all these freaky features. Normal people will be like, holy cow, what's all this? So the good thing about the modularity is that we can replace or take out any single element here and replace it with a standard feature. Hey, if you're scared by the biogas digester, well, if you got a sewer line, connect to it if you want to. But uh, for me, no thanks. I'd rather do it more ecologically uh, locally and give gas while I'm at it. So things like that. Um, yeah, so that's basically the description. So now this video really captures it. So if you if you miss anything, just go basically to the CD Eco Home script. All the all the parts that are in bold show the elements that should be there, and it's it's going to be hard because there's a lot of these. So see what we can do, and see how we can streamline it so that we we get the idea of the whole package uh, in this in this house. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds excellent. Excellent. I had, uh, I had made sort of like a, a short list on in the first sketch that I sent the other day, and there were like uh, I had listed like 20 items or so. I, so I think I got most of those on the list. I just haven't started uh, plugging them into the sketch yet. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that sounds great. And as soon as you got it, let us know. Uh, you know, just keep keep on doing what you're doing, sending the rough rough work. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, is there anything else or? Excellent. I'm going to be working on that tonight. Excellent. Okay. They'll, they'll call it a, a day. Okay. So we're good on here. Thanks a lot then. And yeah, just scream if you've got any questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.